In today's episode of the Spring Report, we are covering the new Wilson Launchpad 2 products from driver down to iron. We've got Thomas here with us to give some insight and do some testing, and we'll tell you everything that you need to know. Also, golfers, make sure you skip to the last chapter of the video for our final thoughts. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka for a new edition of the Swing Report. It is Wilson Launchpad 2. We've got driver, fairway wood, hybrid, and iron here, Thomas. Um, you know, first thing when I look at these, I see game improvement and uh, help really for the average golfer. Yeah, help to cure, well not cure, but help to solve any slice problems. Mm -hmm. One thing looking at the at the driver, it definitely has got some offset. Oh yeah. Definitely a little more upright. I believe it's a couple degrees upright than what a traditional driver would be. And the face looks like it's a little bit close. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely designed for game improvement, as you mentioned, but definitely for those golfers that curve the ball from left to right. Yeah, and Wilson's done some, some extensive research behind the scenes too in, in designing this stuff because they are, you know, the goal, like I mentioned, is to help the average kind of mid to high handicap golfer. And what they noticed in their research, at least with driver, is that 68% of shots are hit towards the toe side compared to the heel side. And so they structured their clubs in a way that benefits those shots a lot more. You'll see a lot more weight supporting that side of the club. Um, and then you can also see in the club face design, like you mentioned, that, that uh, fighting the slice tendency with all the clubs, not just driver, you can see that offset there throughout the, the whole set. So um, that's where you, you see a lot of the benefits here is the golfer that struggles with that slice and is missing the center of the face, particularly maybe towards that toe side where a lot of golfers miss. And so that's why I think, you know, Wilson's done a great job of targeting a really large demographic here. Well, it's interesting you, you bring up the, the toe contact. I mean, I, when you say that, I think gear effect. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about 68% of golfers hitting the ball on, on the toe, I'm actually glad that, that high, the higher percentage of people do hit the ball on the toe yeah. versus the heel, because if you have a club path that is out to end, leave that face open, it's gonna curve even more to the right. right. So I think it's interesting the way they designed the club head to make it easier to get the ball to curve from right to left. And I think it's just another added piece to the, the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then one other note too is the PKR club face um, that is, yeah, it can be seen on the driver. PKR, uh, peak kinetic response. Um, it's basically their way of designing the club face that is, you know, it's intelligent in a way that it helps at impact regardless of where it's made on the face, uh, stabilizes that thing and gives you high ball speeds throughout. Yeah, so, you know, that's the woods. The woods are definitely a little bit more draw bias to help the golfer, golfer out with regards to solving any slice issues. Um, looking at the iron, the iron mm -hmm. at, at the other end of the spectrum, it's definitely, you know, max game improvement. Yeah. It's got that little bit more of that hybrid look to it looking down at it, so it's a mixture. So the idea behind that is moving that center of gravity as low as they poss as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. It's got a very, very large sole, um, so it's going to help with a lot of forgiveness. But the idea is to get that ball up in the air as fast as they can. Yeah, for sure. So I'm imagining we're going to see you know, a lot of swing speed from you here too, based on what we're used to seeing because of the, you know, the stock shafts that we have to work with today. It's a light, regular flex. Uh, can you explain a little bit what you know about this shaft here? Yeah, so even flow, I think, you know, and the driver, we're talking 55 grams as their stock. Um, and then if we go, go up a little bit more and the hybrids and the irons are 65 grams. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit lighter than what, definitely a lot lighter than what I'm used to. But it is their design as a stock shaft to help also generate more distance. With a lighter golf shaft, you're able to generate a little bit more club speed. So I think it'd be interesting to see, you know, what happens with driver, but also what happens with irons too. And yeah. Lighter golf shaft can also help get the ball up in the air. Yeah, well, uh, we'll hit a few shots here with each of the clubs, get Thomas's feedback, but uh, I think we already have a little bit of a good idea of which golfers will benefit the most uh, from Launchpad 2, but uh, stick with us here for the testing. I think we'll see some good stuff. So, Tom, just one note on you got the driver start. Uh, upright lie angle. Yep. Uh, is, it's a two degrees upright compared to, to standard. So, do you, I mean, do you notice that when you look down at it? Yeah, when I sit the club down and I even just kind of let go of it, what I do notice is the head kind of twists this way a little okay. bit as well. But yeah, a little bit more upright. I can definitely see that it's you know, designed to be a little bit, help, mm -hmm. help the golf get the ball to start a little to the left yeah. as opposed to being a, a flatter lie angle. Uh, there's, you know, some offset. Yeah. There's definitely some offset on, on the club. Um, for me, when I sit it down, you know, I want to set it open because I'm used to seeing the, the, the square face. But let's just kind of play it normal and see what happens mm -hmm. in the bull flight. I 
That was pretty loud. That was loud. It was, it was definitely a lot of noise loud off the one. face. You hit, hit that, well. you hit that pretty square? I hit that one pretty good, actually. Actually, slightly, slightly high toll. So. Oh, you can see the mark. Okay. Yeah, you can see that mark right, right there. There you go. Yep. Um, height, 152 feet in the air. Now, this is the 10 and a half degree head. Yeah. So it's going to fly a little higher than I'm, than I'm used to seeing. It's going to mm -hmm. spin a little bit more than I'm used to seeing there, too. But that's pretty, pretty high for yeah. flight. I'm wondering, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what your dispersion looks like, given what we know about the kind of, you know, left side bias, draw bias that yeah. the driver has. And that's, that's kind of the bullfight I was expecting to see right off the bat. Is it's starting pretty straight, but just yeah. going a little bit left. And mm -hmm. see, my face angle was at one and a half degrees. It's going to be very easy for that club to, you know, I don't think you'll have that face too, too open in your swings today. Uh, it's it's going to be hard because, I mean, like I said, when I set this down and then I guess set, you know, set down like where, it sh where, it, where it's set to go, that face does look closed. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. It's just, just a little too much loft on the driver for me, and for that's you. why I'm I'm not gonna hit you know crazy distances what we normally normally right. see, uh, unless I get one somehow where that spin rate stays low. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting though that you did have the face slightly open there, but then it drew back and was comfortably left of center still, which I feel like will be the case for most of these. Right. Yeah. It's 57 feet of feet of curve even with a face to path of 0 0.3 mm -hmm. to the right. So. It's, uh, it's definitely slice helping. I should probably try hit a couple of shots here after I hit five, where I slow my swing down. Yeah. It's gonna fit, obviously, those people that are mm -hmm. gonna be a little nah, slower. Because right now we're seeing 150 feet in the air spinning you know, higher and yeah. not going very far. I miss it that. Well, it's going to work. Telesized, but. God, oh, that thing hit high on the screen. Yep. <laughs> so, obviously, these numbers are higher in terms of spin and height than you're used to. Um, but I did just want to bring up the map so we can kind of see exactly, you know, what it looks like. And there we go. I yep. mean, we've got all left. A couple of them are kind of way out there left, but even your rightmost shot was left of center. So you're seeing that, that draw, that, um, you know, the weighting in the club, uh, the way Wilson designed it to be a, a slice fighter, but it's also playing towards um, the impact location piece as well. So I think that's gonna, just because of that, it's gonna be it's huge for a lot of golfers. Yeah, and this club head, it, it doesn't suit my swing or, or my game. Yeah. Uh, and we're seeing that when I swing at 112 miles an hour, you know, with the way this club's designed, I'm hitting it very, very high. Yeah. And my attack angle isn't as high as it sometimes is. I think it was only up six or seven degrees. I'm going to get even higher. Yeah. With less loft on the driver, it's going to, it's going to help. But I think it would be more interesting here for me to tame it down a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's go down. So what average club speed for the amateur male golfer is just over 90 miles an hour for, okay. for, for club speed with the driver. So I'm curious to see what happens if I drop it down to that average category. Let's see what happens to the spin okay. and the launch. I'm, let's face it, when I was hitting those drives, I wasn't getting anything out of it because it was just spinning a little bit too much. It's going to be great for a golfer that's looking for a little extra height, a little bit more mm -hmm. spin, and also help curving the ball to the left. When you've got such high speed, it's just it's not going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. actually really good. Yeah, so what, what's interesting still there... Still almost 100 feet in the air. Yeah, so you know, a landing angle 35 to 40 degrees with a, with a driver is right where you want, want to be. Mm -hmm. So you know, looking at this, you can club speed about 90, 91 miles an hour. Um, you'll notice I still hit a 247 yards. Yeah. And it was because you know, the spin rate actually was actually just a touch lower <laughs> than, than before, but the height was at a much better height. That is actually a really, really good first shot for that. Cause this is, those are numbers, you know, someone swings like you said, at that average, I have to imagine they're, you know, if they're swinging at that average number of 90-ish miles an hour, I have to imagine they don't often get to 246 yards. Right, and we also noticed their face to path was a little bit open, um, so, but my curve was still to the left. Yeah. Just, just a touch, but yeah. still to the left. Wow, 
Wow. Seeing that turnover, that, the spin dropped turnover. a little bit on that one. Yeah, so right at about 2,000 RPMs of spin. Uh, that chased out to 250. It's pretty good for you know, 93 mile an hour club speed. Faced a path of negative 0.5, but still 80 feet of curve to the left. Wow, yeah. yeah. That's a, uh, so, so uh, uh, to clarify, faced a path to, with a negative number indicates that it should be moving right to left. So a negative means it may should be going to the left, but yeah. you know, 0.5 is, is almost dead square. Right, right. And um, I remember so the shot, the previous shot, you had a positive face to path. Right, but, the but ball it's still, still curved, curved just left. a little to the left. Yeah. yeah. I might have jumped on that one just a little bit more. We well, it's still, yeah. 270. I, I still think there's a lot of players in that range of club speed that, you know, could benefit from this. Because they're right. seeing, I mean, these are really efficient numbers that the launch pad 2 is generating here. And, yeah. it, and you're, you're seeing the, the, you know, every time you're just, that ball starting slightly left of center with a little bit more curve left and it's resulting in I mean, nothing on the right side. Yeah, and if you're a golfer that normally sees that ball curve that way, it's gonna help throughout dramatically. Right, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it feels light, uh, you know, it feels really light on, on the hands. I mentioned this shaft, 5.5 regular 55 gram even flow shaft, so it's a little bit lighter than I'm yeah. used to. But with that club speed around about 90 to 90 yeah. miles an hour, it's definitely gonna fall into that category. Well, yeah, and then one thing too, as we kind of make, maybe make a transition to fairway wood, um, would be, that's the club where a lot of amateurs struggle with is getting the ball into the air. And one thing that's, no, so I can see the offset here with this, but then also at 16 degrees, stated the loft for the three wood, which is a one degree higher than kind of the standard or, or the normal loft for a three wood. So at 16 degrees, this is again, uh, you know, it's aimed to get that ball into the air. Um, and so maybe we'll do some more slower swings with this and just see how that performs too. Yeah, loft is, loft is definitely your friend. One thing I want to touch on really quick before we do this, let's take a look at the numbers on this last mm -hmm. shot here. You're talking, I hit that 270 yards with a 90 mile, 98 mile an hour club speed. Let's jump back to those drives that I hit a little bit earlier when I was swinging about 112 miles mm -hmm. an hour. There was a couple there that really weren't too much further than that with regards to distance. Right, right, right. That's a good point. Let's see. So here we can show the dispersion where you're, I mean, it's not, you're, you're, the circles are, are intersecting very slightly there. Yep. Um, but then if we look at the numbers here and you can see the average, you know, distance difference. And then there's a couple with your fast swing here where you were, you know, you had 270 total. You're, it's probably what? 20 yards on some of these, you know, less than 20 yards right. on some of these? Well, you look at shot six versus sh socks no shot nine right there, you know, 286 total distance to 69 total distance. We're talking 17 yards. Yeah. But you'll notice the club speed is, you know, 14 miles an hour faster. That definitely wasn't That's wasn't all about up. delivering the club at a right. certain, you know, because the way you swing it that fast with that shaft, it's going to have it launch way higher with more spin. And then, of course, the shot with the more moderate or average swing speed was, you know, right in that sweet zone of spin, 148 smash, and it launched lower and penetrated the air a little bit better. Yeah. And I, I mentioned landing angle, average 35 to 40. Well, 35.5 is what yeah. I was at with an average club speed of 94 yeah. miles an hour. It's, it's great. So, you know, loft is, loft is your friend also with the driver if you have a slower swing speed. It's lighter, it's gonna help those golfers mm -hmm. out that don't maybe swing as fast, yeah. but also struggle with that slice. For sure, for yeah. sure. All right, well, let's, let's check out this three wood here, the launch pad three wood, see right. how that does. Wow, so I got a, a nice little smooth swing. Yeah. I got a lot of height actually, a lot more than I expected it to. Yeah, for, for, for this speed, yeah, it still was, you know, 40 degree landing angle with a three wood, very good. Yeah. yeah. Hit that one well. Yes, you did. Face angle, degree and a half open, but it only curved three feet to the right. It's definitely helping mm -hmm. me out. I think that's the first time all day we've seen one right side of center. Yeah. I mean, when I'm swinging- barely over there. <laughs> when I'm swinging at 94 miles an hour with a, with a fairy wood, I'm not thinking as much to try and turn on yeah, the yeah, other yeah. side. 
I'm slowing everything down. Mm -hmm. There's a chance that I'm probably not going to well, that was turn a, it over That was a very efficient swing for that not being a comfortable speed for you. <laughs> Yeah, easy. Forgiving, easy to hit off the ground as well. Just that little extra mm -hmm. loft is going to help for sure. Yeah, it definitely generates enough height, I think. And enough height and launch for that player that might struggle with it. You're seeing, you know, a 75 feet with that three wood at that speed is pretty darn good. You got that landing angle in that 35 to 40 range, which is, I know, what you wanted for driver. Yep. And with three wood, you're getting that too. Uh, so that's really comforting to see. And that's pretty good distance even for you know, someone swinging 90 miles an hour with a three wood to get it up, up in the 230, 240 range is a lot of distance actually. Yeah, it, it felt pretty easy to get, you know, get the ball up in the air. Uh, as I mentioned, it sits a little closed, a little bit more upright. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna, it's gonna fight that slice. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've got a, a hybrid. We'll kind of test the same type of thing here. Okay. Um, you can see that one's at 19 and a half degrees. And then give me kind of your thoughts on how that looks to, I mean, I imagine there's going to be that similar kind of closed, you know, uh, potentially the, the, the upright lie angle look to it where it's, you know, I was fighting that right miss. It sits a little closed. It doesn't look as evident as it did with like the, the driver okay. story would though. It's actually a kind of a good looking rounded hybrid with just a little bit of offset. Okay. It's a lot of height too, 90 yep. feet there. Despite kind of having that closed club face there at, uh, which probably de-lofted it a little bit. Right, loft is your friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Might be just a little left. Yeah, not bad. That's it's still plenty it's high for having a low spin there. Cause that, that spin dropped cause I think you had, you know, a little bit of a more closed face than you and anticipated. A little, a little on the toe as well. Okay. Face to path, yeah, I was three and a half degrees left. If I could get that face to be a little more open at impact, it would fly a little higher, yeah. but it also it wouldn't curve as far to the left. Mm -hmm. this, this club is just when it sits down on the ground. Right, right. It looks like it's, it's pointed. <laughs> that way. Uh, why'd I go after that a little more? <laughs> it's not bad. Oh, you did, you, yeah, a little bit of a I forgot I was trying to speed, really, like, really, really smooth it. Well, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a tough ass to just on command be like, hey, swing slower <laughs> and do it consistently, yeah. but. I guess it wasn't that much faster. It was still 92 miles an hour club speed. Yeah, so, no, yeah. that's, I think ultimately we're just trying to see, uh, you know, how it performs for someone that's probably going to actually fit into these clubs a little bit, uh, at least that swing speed. And I think it's, it's good to know that we're seeing enough height launch spin on these um, so that, you know, I think that's the concern with, especially these clubs, three wood hybrid for someone that has maybe a average to maybe slightly above average speed. The concern all the time is get the ball up in the air high enough to let the, you know, to get the shot you want um, on those longer clubs. And I think the launch pad here is definitely catered towards that player and that, that desire to get the ball in the air. Yeah, 100% agree. It's designed for a slower swing speed, that person mm -hmm. that, that slices the ball. Uh, and this is a great transition club, as opposed to going all the way with three or four iron in your bag. This is gonna be so much easier to get the ball up in the air, help turn the ball over a little bit, yeah. but give you that landing angle that you need, especially if your swing speed is even slower than what I was swinging. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're seeing, you know, and there's that, I mean, these are, you just hit just a few shots with the three wood and the hybrid, but you see that the Spurs is pretty consistent. Again, only one shot all day still that is right of center. So clearly that, that draw bias is there. So um, with that, we can move into iron here. And we talked a little bit about that look, but on, I mean, on the camera, you can see too, that is, there is a huge, huge sole. And I'm going to have, put that close to the camera. You can see how big that is. And you can see some of this action behind the, the face there, as you look down at it, maybe I can try to give that angle here, but you can kind of see how, you know, you get, you can see a lot of this action behind the face right there. So you'll see that and it's probably, you know, depending on the golfer you are, that can either inspire confidence. It's going to be a very different look for you though, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a hybrid iron. It kind of, it kind of fits in with those other 
models that you think of. Yeah. Like you got like a Cobra T Rail. That yeah. Uh, you got your your Cleveland Launcher HP Turbo. Mm -hmm. Kind of fits in along those lines. Yeah. So I'm imagining we'll see uh, some pretty high launch and spin here. Well, maybe for sure high launch because you can see how much weight is down low in that club. But yeah. And for this, that's this hit a couple with faster and a couple with slower speed. Okay. The same same thing. See, see what happens to the to the numbers. Wow. I feel like I didn't even quite catch that, but that is really high. So that's interesting that the spin was that low, and that could be because you didn't quite catch it perfect. Yeah. But I feel like I drop kicked that just a tad. But that hit the screen quite higher than I'm used to seeing you. <laughs> yeah hit the screen with a seven iron. And we do a lot of seven iron testing in here. But. I usually don't see that top of the peak of the curve. Right, go above, above the, 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 above the, the you know, it goes over the limits yeah. of the screen. Yeah, so yeah, that was 140 feet in the air, landing angle of 54. See if I hit Steve. one a little bit more solid on this next one. Cause that was only a one three smash, one three seven smash. Yeah, and you're used to. I got that a little chunky. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hit a little more solid. Yeah, that was really that loud. Yeah, I was going to comment oh, on that there go. too. Oh. There's some spin too. There you go. So, so that's, that's the spin I was, I was expecting. expecting to yeah. see. So that sound though, we should probably comment on that. Um, that was, it's loud, which is I think what you expect from a club that kind of has that shape to it. I don't think there's any avoiding having that loud sound, but to your point again, it, it is player dependent on what type of sound and feel player likes. It's probably one of the loudest irons I've ever I think it heard. is. It's one and of the loudest I think I've heard in most solid a bay environment. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. loud. But with that said, you're, I'm noticing right away that you've gained speed on seven iron swing for you, because I know you're usually right around 90 miles an hour. Yep. Um, what was that night? Well, that's, and that's you, probably the fastest you I've didn't even, seven, I didn't, yeah. You didn't even notice that either. You right. were just swinging your seven iron speed, and yeah. uh, you gained four to five miles an hour without even knowing it. Uh, so I think that speaks to, you know, that lightweight shaft and really what it's geared for, gaining speed, gaining launch, gaining height, and hitting straighter shots too, which those are all straight shots. Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of, of both. It's the club head, you know, but also this, this shaft in here is going to really help those golfers pick up a little mm -hmm. bit more club speed and ultimately a little bit more distance. Yeah. It's, that's, that's, that's a welcome, welcoming amount of spin. On a on a game improvement seven yeah. iron that I that I've seen because we we test all these game improvement irons and usually you know they're so delofted and they launch it so low they you know when you've been hitting them it's been you know forty five hundred spin or something like that and then the ball is going to roll all the way off the green usually but that's nice to know for the player that yeah. um, if they do maybe launch it low having trouble with it this is a high launch high spin iron yeah with the amount of speed that I was generating there it stopped within three and a half yards yeah. And clearly, it would be a, a bad fit for, for me with the amount oh, of speed yeah. that I'm generating and my skill level. But once again, let's tame it down a little bit now. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, let's go, you know, into that that average club speed, probably I guess around about 80 miles an okay. hour for for a seven iron, if I if I can do that, and just see what happens. Naturally, yeah, the the launch is going to go down, the spin's going to go down. Yeah, height and landing. I, but if by, we can by get how that, much? I mean, if we can get that height around 100 feet you know, and have that landing angle be in that, was it 45 degrees-ish yeah. is kind of what you're looking for. If we can get it around that, that'd be, that'd be really good. As long as it's above 40, you know, I mean, if you slow that swing speed even lower, then actually it's right, gonna, right. everything's gonna go lower. Yeah. As long as it's above 40, it's mm -hmm. give me a good fit. Yeah. There you go. Nice. 80 feet in the air, landing angle 43.6. Spin rate almost five thousand. It's pretty good. That's that's pretty darn solid. Pretty and how good. straight was that? That was pretty good. <laughs> that's seventy-seven mile an hour club speed, and I said I was going to try and do about about eighty. About eighty. But that's that's slightly slower than what you know average would be yeah. for your amateur golfer. I mean, players. I have to imagine the average player with that speed is w could gain some height and launch and landing angle with this iron. Right. Has to be the case, right? You know, if there's a, if they're all properly fit, you know, a club like this would do a lot of benefit, I think. Yeah, it's still a, it's still a decent amount of height and, and great landing angle yep. for only a club speed of 77 mm -hmm. miles an hour.
Yeah, I mean, 50, we got that over 100 600. feet there. I left the face just a touch open on that one, so naturally yeah. it's going to fly just a little bit higher. But yeah. Even still, I mean, 100 feet in the air with. Yeah. Let's get one more here, with uh, kind of that average speed. Did I go too fast there? Nope. No, I didn't. That's good. That wow, that's a good one to end on there. That's that's a great example there. Um, you I mean, take a look at my average club speed, it was like 81.4 with this 7-iron. And I think my landing angle, it had to be about 45 or maybe just a little bit over on those three swings. 46.6, mm -hmm. almost 46 100 feet in the air. 46.6, and you're averaging 93 feet in the air, and you're swinging it at what is considered a pretty average uh, club speed with a 7-iron. I mean, and... You're still, and that's a seven iron going 176 total yards. Yeah. So, and to clarify, I know you with your seven iron like to carry it about 178 ish. Yeah. And it's, it's, about, it's about 178 going about 186. So, it stops so, within about eight yards for me normally. So, you basically dropped, you know, what, 10 miles an hour of club speed, and you're still. And I lost 10 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Which. Yeah, we, we know every mile an hour of club speed is about two to three yards. Mm -hmm. So, big difference there. But then, I'm just impressed by the landing angle being like that, that high, and then hitting it 93 feet in the air with a club like that at that speed. That's, that's, that's really good. Yep, it, it's good. I mean, you know, any club that's designed here, with, you know, large sole, center gravity push very, very low. Mm -hmm. uh, the hybrid, uh, they're... That's just, just this face, it. they don't look amazing at setup, so people like to, to look at a more traditional yeah. looking iron. I get that, but the benefits, I think, outweigh the looks a lot of the times when it comes to looking at these kind of like right. hybrid looking irons. If you can get over that look, it's gonna be great for your game. And, and again, there are players that like that look and don't want something tiny like a blade to, to, to look at, but I, I think I'm really impressed by the performance of all of them, just the launch, um, the height generated, and then you know the the right fighting the right, uh, it, they do all those things really well. I think. Right, I I agree. It uh, I mean it's it's louder than I'm used to. Yeah. Uh, you know the sound, but you get over the look and the, and the sound and the performance do its job. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good game fruit and iron. So Tom is testing complete of the Wilson Launchpad Two. We went. Driver down to seven iron, um, and we, you know, kind of mixed up the speeds a little bit too, which I think was good because we really found a target golfer that these are all for. So why don't we just get into that right away? Like, like, kind of describe the golfer or golfers that would best fit uh, the Launchpad Two clubs here. Yeah. So what we notice with, you know, when we're when I was swinging faster, is you know the distance gains they weren't there. We we act, I actually lost a little bit of performance because. The clubs were designed for a slower swing speed right. golfer. Well, you guess, guess your more average amateur club speed yeah. as opposed to a lot, lot faster. So if you swing really, really fast, you might want to look at a couple other different options to keep that spin down. Yeah. Um, however, you know, talking about these irons here is their, their draw bias. Yeah. So very, very draw bias, very easy to get that ball to turn over from right to left. Yeah, for sure. I know we noticed that on the screen here. I've got the screen up and I think out of the, you know, 15 to 20 shots, there was two that were ended up right of center, and that may have been just leaving the face a little bit more open than usual for you. Yeah. But everything else was turning over very easily. There was some comfortably left of center, um, and so that should be encouraging for the player that has that tendency to slice the ball or maybe leave that face wide open at impact. Um, I think the launch pad two is really going to help that player correct that a little bit. Yeah, I think we noticed we're looking at that dispersion pattern. The further the ball went down the, down the screen, so the further I hit it, the further left it went. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, you know, a slice fighting design. Uh, if you're a golfer that, hook, that hooks the ball, probably stay away from it. Right. But if you're a golfer that, that, that slices the ball, you need a little help just yeah. to straighten out your shots. It's and, a, it's a win. and let's face it, and I think most amateur golfers, if they have a common miss, it's probably a slice or a block more frequently. Now, that's not to say you can't be one of an amateur golfer that struggles mostly with a hook or a draw. Uh, but I think uh, the, the majority of players struggle with that right miss. Uh, and then the other thing too we need to point out and we noticed how effective they were was high launch. 
and generating height, generating landing angle, which is an important part, especially irons and kind of hybrids, fairy woods, when you're trying to go at the green, you don't want it to come in really low and roll all the way over. You're trying yep. to get it to land and stop on the green. I think there's a lot of landing angle uh, generated here, a high landing angle with each of these clubs. Yeah, we definitely noticed it with the hybrid and the seven iron when I was swinging a little bit slower. And mm -hmm. I. You, know, you could talk about those seven iron numbers a little bit. You know, my spin rate was over 5,000 RPMs when I was swinging at 80 miles an hour. Right. When I'm swinging at 90 miles an hour, my spin rate is only just over 5,000 right. miles an hour. There are two with the clubs that I use. So even though the lofts are a little bit stronger, the way the club is designed is going to cause the ball fly higher. And we were seeing landing angle, I think it was 46.6, yeah. was the average landing angle at almost 100 feet in the air. So, it, it's great. So even if you don't swing super fast, right. it's going to give you stopping power. Yeah, and that's why we tried to showcase that today was, you know, you swinging a little bit slower. It's not something you're used to doing. So, uh, but kudos to you for, you know, slowing it down and still, you know, getting uh, good numbers and good contact to show us some stuff. And we saw a ton of height, ton of uh, stopping power available and to be had here with Launchpad 2. So um, really good stuff here. And I think that's going to be a kind of a sleeper and really good performer throughout the year for 2022 and beyond as more golfers maybe are you know falling into that category maybe some new golfers joining the game that don't quite have the swing speed yet or the consistent contact yet they get a lot of performance from launchpad 2 here yeah it's, it's nice to have a competition and wilson looks like they're bringing some competition mm -hmm. in that game improvement category for sure well golfers you know where to go for your launchpad 2 golf club second swing golf you can look at secondswing.com can schedule a fitting at one of our store locations or talk to one of our online fitting and support team members thomas thank you for joining today providing your insight and testing. Really good stuff here from Launchpad 2.